Hey there, Commanders. So, I had a request from one of my viewers to go over some of the special effects icons that can pop up during combat encounters and in other time and at other times in the game. Uh, and this is something that new players often don't know, but all of these symbols are unique to different uh, engineering effects. Some symbols can be created by several effects, but they are all consistent to the same type of, of end result. So, um, any experimental effect that breaches shields will throw this symbol, any weapon that does massive internal damage will throw this symbol, any time you breach the hull of a target ship, um, you get this symbol. Uh, different symbols for different situations. Things like corrosion, though, uh, tend to be unique to corrosive shell, for example. Um, but these symbols are something that you'll start to memorize just naturally as you go through the game, because as you start encountering other players and engineered NPCs that are able to apply these effects, uh, it's just something that comes with time. Uh, but in practice, these symbols uh, show up at a specific place in the game's interface. Uh, this is some gameplay of me from a while ago testing out Dumbfire Missile Racks with uh, one had penetrator munitions and I can't remember what I put on the other one, but uh, it was designed to mess with internal and external modules. Um, but I also on this chieftain have other experimentals that do different things, so you'll get a chance to see how these all get applied. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, re real quick before I start firing, uh, the interface layouts are across Elite Dangerous are, are pretty straightforward. If you didn't know, um, you've got your ship's 3D model for my ship and the enemy ship. You've got your shield rings, you've got your hull indicators. But in between the shield rings and the hull indicator down here, you've got these thick bars that run along the outside of these concentric circles. When an experimental effect or other special effect is applied to you, these bars will load up. Um, showing you what the effect is. Some effects start in the middle, some effects... it's I'm not entirely sure how it orders them all, but this is where you look for the symbols that I was showing you earlier. So, um, as I get close to this Corvette and start opening up on it, you'll see I haven't fired yet, but rewind. Ten seconds. Let it play. And there it is. There's a couple of different weapons that can apply this effect, but you get these three dots in a row. I'll go over to the chart right here, and you'll see that those three dots are impulse attack. Uh, so things like force shell will typically cause this, but there are a number of other weapons that can impart impulse onto the target. Uh, and it's if it's not explicitly stated in an experimental, it's usually something intrinsic to the weapon. But anytime you see those three dots, uh, if you're seeing it on an enemy ship, it means that something is altering the trajectory of the ship without the pilot's input. And if you see it over here, it means something's altering your trajectory uh, without your input. And Kovas will actually warn you and say something like uh, trajectory attack or impulse attack or something. I can't remember what the exact cue is. Because I actually have I've run with my Kovas muted for quite a while. But uh, as the attack continues, um, you'll see other symbols pop up and disappear pretty quick. Uh, yellow indicators mean it's, um, the best term to, uh, to say, say it is basically it's a passive effect. It's something that's being done to the ship that's not necessarily persistent. It's usually just warning you that something has happened. So in this case, impulse attack. Um, the ship's trajectory is being altered. And right here, I hit it with a hammer railgun that has a shield cell cascade on it. So that, those little parentheses right there with the minus sign, that specifically comes from, I think it's, rev it's feedback cascade is the experimental, but it applies, I match it right here, the shield cell cascade effect, which basically means that that shield cell bank that he's popping isn't going to have its full effect to regenerate the shields. This is one of the most powerful special effects in the game, uh, and anytime you see this right here, it means that you have to be very careful. Uh, when you pop your shield cells, because if you're in range of his railguns, he's going to be able to cancel you. Uh, so in this situation, you like I have all of the advantage. He can't do anything with his shield cells that's remotely effective. But um, if this were a PvP encounter, the ideal time to pop a shield cell when you know that your attacker can cancel them is during a strafe. You want to point your nose right at the guy and boost past him as fast as you can, deploying your shield cell in the last uh, like second before you actually pass each other to give it time to fully spin up and deploy. Now, there are specific blueprints and experimentals you want to have on the shield cell to minimize your spin up time as much as possible, 
we can get into those later. Actually, I think I go over them a little bit in my uh, Shields and Cell Banks video if you guys are at all interested in that. But uh, we'll let it keep going. Now his shields are down, and the experimentals that get applied are going to change. Here we go. Uh, step it back just a little bit. A little bit more. There we go. These two guys, you want to match it to this chart, and you'll see internal damage and hull breach. This is because of the experimentals I'm running on the dumb fire racks. Um, these are our passive effects like the others, meaning it's basically just, if you were um, if you were a commander in the ship and saw these symbols, it means that uh, the yellow means it's already happened. You're, there's nothing you can do about it, it's just an effect that's been applied. So in this case, I've, done, I've breached the hull and I've dealt um, internal damage to modules. You'll see them over here if you ever become the victim of these effects. And it lets you know to uh, start keeping an eye on the modules inside your ship, because bad things are happening to them. Uh, although, lamentably, it, it, you don't get any indicators up here in your ship model as to what modules have been damaged. You actually have to physically look over in your panel and check. Um, but as the fight progresses, you'll see other little things flash up here and there that are too quick to really observe. That little blue plus sign keeps showing up. Um, that's one of the only times you'll see a blue indicator uh, for regeneration. Uh, and all that means is that either the shield or the hull is receiving a buff. It's having uh, hit points physically regenerated. This is typically on shields, it's concordant or regeneration sequence, and on hull, it's repair limpets. I'm not sure why it's popping up here, but it is popping up, so something's happening to regenerate this vessel in some way. Or maybe it's just a bug, I don't know, but it's there. Now, at some point during this fight, um, a, sp a specific experimental effect pops up that I want to show because it's going to be a different color. So far, we've, all we've seen is yellow and a little bit of blue. But, uh, let's see, I'm trying to remember exactly where that happens. And I'm hesitant to skip around because I'm probably going to miss it, but we'll go ahead and give it a shot here. Ah, there it is. Rewind it a little bit and play. There we go. We've got a red in, uh, red warning down here. What this means is that an active debuff has been applied. In this case, we've got these three little lines. Match it to the chart. Corrosion, meaning corrosive shell. I have a dedicated video about this if you want to know the details of its effect, but this is a class of special effect that applies an active debuff with a countdown. And that countdown is reflected in Elite Dangerous by this red background, which you'll see as I play the video, slowly scrolls down until it vanishes. There are a bunch of, of effects that work like this. I can actually list them out real quick. Uh, FSD Reboot, Corrosion, uh, do, 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 shield, shield Reboot, Engine Disruption, and Increased, ma uh, increased Emissions. Uh, Malfunction also acts like this too. Uh, these are effects that that alter a ship's behavior in some way or do stuff to its systems that last for a little while. Um, you'll get familiar with those too as you play along, but they, these are some of the more powerful effects in the game. Now, I'm not sure what applied corrosive shell. I don't think I have that on this ship. But um, it is a very desirable effect, and that's how you can tell if you've been impacted by it. Um, your Covis will warn you, and then you'll get a countdown timer down here to indicate when it wears off. But there's another mechanic behind how these things work that can be interesting because um, corrosive shell doesn't have a lockout cooldown like some of these others do. Um, but malfunction, FSD reboot, and shield reboot do. Uh, meaning that these effects can only be applied every once in a while. Um, in the case of malfunction, this is applied by the scramble spectrum experimental. It will flash red uh, like this guy did earlier. And actually, maybe I've got that in here somewhere. No, I don't have it labeled, so we won't worry about it. But you would get that triangle, it would flash red, and then you would get a malfunction indicator up here. And then after it flashes red, it will change yellow. And, uh, like you can see, the, the same shade of yellow you've got here, except that it will be a flashing yellow symbol. And what that means is that the active effect has already been applied, and now there is a passive cooldown that is fixed. And while that yellow triangle is sitting there flashing, your, your module that was affected will still malfunction, but you cannot be affected by another module malfunction. You are immune uh, until that triangle eventually disappears. I don't have a good example of that queued up, unfortunately, 
but it works the same way with FSD reboot. If somebody hits you with a weapon that uh, resets your frame shift drive, this symbol will flash red somewhere down here, or if it's against you, somewhere right here, indicating that you have successfully rebooted the target's FSD. Then it will switch to yellow and it will flash, indicating that the target's FSD is rebooting, and during that cycle they are immune to further reboot effects. And I should warn anyone who wants to use FSD reboot experimentals uh, that that yellow flashing window is going to remain flashing long after the target's FSD has come back online. It's a deliberate effort on FDEV's part to allow targets to escape. So when you use uh, FSD reboots, there's not much point in having more than one weapon equipped with that experimental and um, not much point in having a bunch of iterations of it stacked up. So uh, if you're trying to trap people in an instance, a uh, dumbfire missile rack with FSD reboot as the experimental and a size 1 is, is plenty. Um, but if you feel like doing power play for an interesting module, you can get a size 2 Grom bomb that has FSD reboot as an intrinsic effect, and then you can add another experimental on top of it for extra cheese. Can be fun, but you are, I believe the Grom bomb is less powerful. I can do a, a dedicated video on that particular uh, weapon later, but uh, this is. It's a good system. I I don't really have any anything more to add to it in terms of, of functionality and purpose. It's it's adequate. Like I'd we'll leave it at that. Um, the only thing that I wish would happen is that these ship models would give you more information about modules taking damage. Try to uh, warn you at least with some color coding that bad things are happening. Um, like for example, this cutter's engines are disabled. I don't get any indicator that they are, except that it's just kind of drifting and spinning. I would have to go into my target attributes panel and look at that information to tell that anything's gone wrong. I think that's everything out of this video clip that um, it is necessary to explain what's going on. So, I will uh, catch you guys later. Oh, uh, before I go, you can go to NovaForce.com, Guides Combat, and if you are interested, you can actually download this as a chart for your own reference on your computer. Uh, these are some... It's a good group to look up if you really want to get into PvP. Uh, this website's got a lot of resources for it, and I can do videos on that later if you guys all want. Let me know in the comments below, and uh, I'll see you around.